गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू इन प्रीवियस सेशन वी आर डिस्कस इनवर्स रेट ट्रांसफॉर्म वैसी इन थ्री मेथड्स फॉर आइडेंटिफाइंग इनवर्स रेट ट्रांसफॉर्म बाई यूजिंग कंट्रोल इंटीग्रेशन दैट इज इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज बाई यूजिंग कशियर एसिडी विथ थेरम और इनवर्जन ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स इंटीग्रल राइट सेकेंड मेथड वॉज पावर सीरीज एक्सपांशन वेर वे सी इन लॉन्ग डिविजन मेथड टू आइडेंटिफाई द इनवर्स रेट ट्रांसफॉर्म and third one we are seeing partial fraction expansion which is also called as table lookup method <coughs> in today's session we will be discussing analysis of linear time invariant systems in the z domain we have already seen the topic analysis of linear time invariant systems in the time domain uh, where we have analyzed the system by using differential equation convolution uh, summation right uh, where that uh, Uh, the stability and causality of system is defined by using the uh, impulse response of the system so here in the z domain again we will be defining the natural response and the force response in terms of transient and steady state responses okay so in today's session we will be discussing the transient and steady state responses so we already know that the response of the system to a given input can be separated into two components first one is the natural response these things we have discussed when we have seen the difference equation where we have identified the zero input response so that natural response is also termed as the zero input response and second one is the forced response so this forced response is also termed as the <coughs> zero state response okay uh, uh, in uh, that the difference equation topic we have discussed how to identify the homogeneous solution and particular solution from homogeneous solution we identified the zero input response which is also termed as the natural response of the system somewhere it is also referred as the pre response right so the natural response so how uh, first we'll see how this natural response and transient response are related so the natural response and the transient response of the system right so the natural response of a causal system has the form Y n r this in suffix n r represents the natural response y n r of n is equals to summation k is equals to one two capital n a k a k r the scaling factor p k r the pole values you can say raised to the power n into u of n okay so this is the generalized form of the natural response for a causal system right so where this uh, pk where this k is varying from 1 to n as you can see here in the equation the summation limits for variable k is 1 to n okay so there will be values p1 p2 up to pn represents the poles of this given system okay poles of the system and ak or the scaling factor right? scale factor of the system that depends on the initial conditions
initial conditions and on the characteristics of the system. So PK indicates the poles of the system, while AK are the scale factor that depends on the initial conditions of the system as well as on the characteristics of the system. So U of N is the unit step sequence that we already know, right? It is one of the elementary discrete time signal. The, the natural response of a causal LTI system is given as y and r of n is equal to or it has the generalized form as y and r of n is equal to summation k is equal to 1 to n a k p k raised to power n u of n okay so <clears throat> the difference in the natural response and the force response is only in the this scaling factor okay as you observe here this scale factor a k uh, depends on the initial conditions okay because as we have seen in the difference equation while identifying the natural response or zero input response the input is not considered or input is taken as the zero okay so that means the response of system depends on only initial condition that is y of minus one y of minus two and so on right so th those indicates only the scaling factor of the system right so <clears throat> If uh, these values of poles are less than one for all k, okay. So if uh, this pk is less than one for all k, right? And then y and r of n, this y and r of n decays <coughs> to zero, okay. It uh, uh, gradually gets decreased okay up to zero as n approaches to infinity if you are increasing the value of n that is time okay so this uh, y and r of n will decrease okay if <clears throat> if this pk is less than one because we are taking uh, pk raised to the power n so just for example pk value is 0 0.9 okay so if it is 0.9, if you are taking uh, 0.9 raised to the power 10, so obviously this value uh, 0.9 raised to the power 10 will be less than 0 0.9 raised to the power 9. Okay. So if you are increasing the value of n, so uh, if n is approaching infinity, so y and r of n will decrease to 0, right? Gradually it will decrease to 0. So depending on the pole values, if pole values are less than 1 okay so you can say that this uh, y n r of n decays to zero as n approaches to infinity uh, and increases right so in such cases uh, we refer to the natural response of the system as the transient response okay if your natural response is decreasing right it is approaching zero so uh, in such case the natural response is referred as what transient response right So the rate at which this y n r of n decays towards zero depends on the magnitude of pole position, right? Magnitude of that means the actual value of the pole, right? So if uh, it is uh, just for example, if it is 0 0.9, okay, and uh, if or uh, if you are considering two cases, uh, in first case the pole value is 0 0.9, in second case the pole value is 0 0.01, right? So when the pole value is 0 0.01, so it will uh, decays or approaches to zero earlier compared to the value when it is 0 0.9, right? So uh, the rate at which this y n r of n decays towards zero depends on the magnitude of the pole position. If all the poles have small magnitudes, okay, just that I have said now, uh, if the pole values are 0 0.01 or maybe 0 0.003 or maybe 0 0.0004, okay, so such magnitudes are there for all pole values, then what will happen? So obviously, the decay is very rapid, okay, if all the pole values have, sorry, all the poles have small magnitudes, right? 
So if all the poles have small magnitudes, the decay is very rapid. On the other hand, if one or more poles are located near the unit circle, just like 0 0.9, 0 0.9, it is uh, located near the unit circle. Okay, the corresponding terms in y and r of n will decay slowly towards zero. Okay, and the transient uh, will persist for limit, uh, relatively long time. Okay, so that tra uh, transient will be there uh, available there for longer duration. Okay. So this is what all about natural response, which is referred as the transient response. Okay, when you are taking the all pole values less than one. Okay, in this case, the natural response decays to zero as and uh, approaches to infinity. So second one is the forced response. So this is termed as what a steady state response. So if you compare the generalized form of this forced response and natural response, they have a similar generalized form. Okay. So simply here it is y n r of n. So it, here we will be taking it as y f r of n. Okay, that is forced response of the system, right? So it is equals to summation k is equals to so here we can take some other summation variable uh, or the range of variable we can modify right so k is equals to 1 to n is here so i can take it as k is equals to 1 to l just for example okay and the scaling factor we have taken it here it is a k right so here i can take it as q k uh whole values as q k raised to the power n again u of n right so only variable uh, notations I have changed here, right? but uh, terms are similar, right? So again, where this QK, small QK, represent the pole values, okay? <coughs> the poles. Here N is varying from 1 to L, so Q1, Q2 up to QL will be the pole values. And while this QK are again scale factor, but initially this scale factor depends on the initial conditions. But now this scale factor will depend on the input sequence. Okay. So uh, these were the scale factors, right? So scale are uh, scale factors depends on. the input sequence as well as you can say the characteristics of the given system right so we have seen force response when we have seen the different equation topic right where that force response is also called as uh, zero state response where we are considered initial state as zero that is y of minus one y of minus two considered as zero so only input were present so therefore, again, in this case, also the scale factors in case of force response depends on input sequence, okay, not on the initial conditions, right? So if all the poles of the input signal fall inside the unit circle, again, obviously, the Y of R of N will decay towards zero as N approaches infinity, just as in the case of natural response that we have just seen, right? That means if this uh, QK is uh, fall within unit circle. That means it is less than one. All QK values for all K, then Y of R of N, okay, Y of R of N, that is force response, decays to zero, right? As N uh, approaches to infinity. On the other hand, when the causal input signal is a sinusoid, the poles fall on the unit circle and consequently the force response is also sinusoid, right? That persists for all n greater than or equals to zero. In this case, this force response is called as what? Steady state response of the system. Okay, that means when you are applying 
uh, input as any sinusoidal it may be cosine or it may be sine function okay so if you are applying it as a, a, a sinusoidal function input is applied as a sinusoidal function the poles falls on the unit circle that point you have to keep in mind okay so what is that uh, the first point that we have discussed is what is that if all poles two conditions here we are discussing first one is if all poles of the input signal fall inside the unit circle what will happen this force response y of r of n will decay towards zero right as in case of your natural response zero as n approaches infinity right this is similar as in case of your natural response right so if on the other hand you can say that when the, the causal input signal is sinusoid the poles fall on the unit circle right so that means uh, this we have already seen we have solved one example where we have identified the uh, z transform uh, where sine and cos functions were involved right uh, the roc for that is simply uh, what you can say that you have taken those e to the power j omega values equals to one right so poles fall on the unit circle right and therefore uh, consequently the forced response is also a sinusoid right so you are applying input as sinusoid as well as you are getting force response as a sinusoid function right and this will persist okay that will persist for all n greater than or equals to zero okay so in this case this uh, forced response okay is termed as what steady state response why steady state response because input is sinusoid and, uh, and to that sinusoid output is also sinusoid but in previous case whatever input that you are applying here the uh, force response is decreasing towards zero okay but in this case it will remain a sinusoid as a signal right so therefore it is called as what steady state response so that is how we are defining the natural response and force response and depending on the characteristics of pole locations right we are simply referring them as what transient response and the steady state response right so in next session will be discussing one example where we will be identifying the transient response that is nothing but the natural response and the steady stress response that is nothing but the force response of the system for the given input output function and the given input signal so input signal should be a sinusoidal signal if you want to identify the steady state response okay so that example we'll try to solve in the next session thank you for joining this session